You know, everybody, when we started thinking of the entertainment panel back in September 2016, we thought that we should have India's leading director here with us because the film is a vision of the director. But Devanshi, you cannot forget that the economics of Bollywood is a completely different ball game. Without a producer, a director's vision cannot go far. But this relationship is incomplete without a stellar actor. <laughs> then let's call on stage the one perfect package of these three, national award-winning actor, director, and one of India's leading producers, the one-man show. Audience, get ready to rock on with Farhan Akhtar. Our moderator of the panel, Mr. Rama Chandran, is an Indian author and journalist. He is the author of Rajni Kant, the definitive biography, and Lights, Camera, Masala, Making Movies in Mumbai. Over to you. Thank you. So we don't have a lot of time, so I'll get stuck right in. And there'll be a good 15 minutes uh, at the end of this session where you can ask questions. So. Uh, Farhan, uh, the theme of today's forum is India, a superpower in the making, uh, with a question mark at the end. Right. Uh, the, question mark, <laughs> the question mark will remain uh, as long as conditions for women remain the, uh, remain the way they are in India. So in this context, can you talk about your wonderful Men Against Rape and Discrimination initiative? Uh, yeah, I mean, hi, good evening, everyone. Um, <laughs> That, that was a good evening without a question mark. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, I mean, as, as far as uh, equality between genders, all genders, not just men and women, um, ending violence against women, equal opportunities, equal access to education, to health, various things. Um, I think there are problems around the globe, um, not just in India. We have our share of issues. Um, and I feel that as people who need to be responsible because we have a certain um, support and love from people because of what we do. Um, I've always found it very important to try and find something that you're passionate about, that you believe needs um, improving, needs change, and to really, really work towards it. Um, I have two daughters. For me, it's very, very important that they have a world um, when they're growing up, that they have opportunities, that they're not treated differently from a man would be treated. Um, so these things are important, so I just do whatever I can. So it's collaborating with many people, d different NGOs who are doing some amazing work. Um, and then apart from that, just doing a lot of messaging through, uh, through music, uh, through a couple of series of short films that we are now in the process of making, going to colleges, speaking to young boys, um, kind of instilling within them the, the importance of getting involved in solution seeking because it's not possible for women to do this entirely by themselves. Um, as much as even I would hope that they could, but it's not possible. I think men need to be there shoulder to shoulder with them. So I, I do whatever I can to try and inspire people to, to understand that that's the only, the only, the healthiest way forward for any society to be a superpower, like you said. Thanks, sir. So um, going to your career, you are born into a film family. So was it a natural progression into the film industry for you? And could you tell us about your experiences working as an AD on Lamhe and Himalaya Putra? Right. Nowadays, I get very scared to talk about being born in a film family. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, we won't use that word here. Right. <laughs> um, no, um, I've, I've just always been fascinated by film. Um, I think maybe because, of course, the environment at home uh, that both Zoya and me grew up in, there was, there was always talk about film, there was always talk about music, about performance, about writing. So it was always very, mis it, there was some fascination. It was magical the way it was done. Um, and I always felt that um, that's the world that I wanted to be a part of. Um, I was very interested in the visual medium, um, not so much in writing when I was younger. Um, and I was into photography, I borrowed um, a camera from Shabana's brother, Baba Azmi. He was very gracious to have lent me his SLR. And I used to go around and make my friends model and uh, make them look pretty hideous actually when I see those photographs now. But I, but I did try. <laughs> um, and I, so but while I was doing that, um, um, it just felt 
like a natural progression to to try and become an apprentice working with a cinematographer in a film so my mother at that time was working with uh, mr yash chopra very very closely on lame um so i had gone and met him and i said this is what i'm interested in doing so he said why don't you come and just join with mr manmohan singh who was the dop of that film and that's really how i started so while i was working on that film is when i noticed what the the director does and what the assistant director does um and that felt more holistic um in terms of experiencing a film because you're involved in performance and costume and production design and the dialogue in everything and i felt like that's probably where i need to find myself um and uh, then then i started working towards that so that's good okay now i'm now going to talk about a malayalam movie okay <laughs> in my own terms <laughs> so the sleeper hit of uh, 2016 in kerala was a film called anandam uh, directed by a debutant named ganesh raj and starring a bunch of about 18 newcomers oh. and uh, in that film a bunch of engineering college students go on a field trip to goa yeah. and visit the fort where dil chahta hai was shot really <laughs> and so one of the uh, leads remarks that he is sitting on the exact same spot as amir khan in the film yeah. uh, and his uh, friend replies but that was 15 years ago yeah. uh, I can't believe that it's been that long because I saw the film just last week and it's as fresh as ever. So how did you gather the finances and such a stellar cast and can you uh, re recount that anecdote how you finally got through to Amir Khan? Yeah, um Amir uh, I mean he's an amazing actor that I think everyone is very well aware of but uh, what was interesting to me was he really really um, wanted to I think get a sense of how serious I am. about what i do how serious i am about wanting him in the movie um so he really made me play the waiting game you know so like i met him once he heard the script um it was in english at that point so he heard it and he said you know i think you should make this film in english don't make it in hindi the sensibility is very a uh, cosmopolitan mm -hmm. so i said no i have to do it in hindi because i want everyone to to watch it uh, so he said theek hai you go back and you write the dialogue in hindi and come so i said okay so i went off um and then i'd finished writing it in, in maybe like about two and a half to three months and then i called him and i said let's me can can we meet and he said yeah we can meet um, i'll let you know when and then just one month became two months and it became three months and became four um and it was like eight months down the line i mean i was wondering what's happening so then he called me and he said uh, let's meet at uh, this one shoot that he was doing for um, some soft drink commercial or something so i went and met him there and he heard the hindi dialogue and he said you know what I really like it but um, I don't know if you're the guy who can direct it yeah <laughs> So I think what you should do is now you should just give me the script and let me make it So um I'm saying nee I can't I can't <laughs> I'm like no I can't do that and in all honesty I mean it it really I there was a part of me I think because I'd written the film the characters were so close to people that I knew I really did feel although I'd not directed a film before that I really did feel that nobody could make it the way I was wanting to make it I I really had that belief um so I said no I, I'm sorry I can't so he said okay then let me think about it and then again just he said I'll, I'll call you back and let you know and then again another 3 4 months passed um and then he said I'd like to hear it again so I said okay so I'll come and meet you so he said okay I'll tell you when <laughs> said, yeah it was amazing so uh, I said fine and then uh, he made me wait and then he said okay so come tomorrow and then I went and I was like man if he doesn't hear it now so I just I was like he had this security system on his door with the camera so I thought if he doesn't hear I'm just going to keep ringing the doorbell and like keep reciting and reciting one page after the other till he till he does hear it but then he did on that day we had a, a good narration and he said he's on and then everything just kind of fell into place you know after that when someone like him gets onto a film and supports a film with a new director new script writer it does help to make us and i mean then he was there like a rock seriously it was just amazing great so staying on dil chahta hai did you ever imagine in your wildest dreams the kind of impact the film would have on audiences in general and the way film making changed in, in uh, india in particular now uh, karan johar wrote in his book that you displaced him as the cool kid in town and he wrote kal ho na ho as a bit to get his coolness back <laughs> i've always appreciated karan's honesty <laughs> um no he did say that to me he said when he had seen dil jata he said that's the reason he 
really got down to writing Kal Hona Ho. Yeah. Um, he said he was very inspired, which is very, very, very sweet. Um, but um, no, you don't. You can't plan these things. Um, nobody really, really knows what's going to happen uh, with their film. I mean, you do hope for it to be a success. You put in all the ingredients that you possibly can, like a, a good star cast, you know, good songs, good scenes, good script. You can do all of that stuff. But even then, at times, films don't work, so you don't know what's going to happen. But uh, beyond the fact that whatever it did at, at the box office and uh, that happened, the, the, the fact that it's really stayed with so many people, you know, and that it's inspired so many young actors, young writers, young directors who are now working uh, in film and speak very fondly about the first time that they saw the film and what it meant to them. It, it just feels amazing, but it, it wasn't planned. You know, you, you can't really set out to do those things. Those things happen, I think, um, in spite of you. You know, so that's what it is. I have a uh, personal anecdote. Uh, just before the film released, uh, I think it was Ritesh or Prav uh, Praveen, they came to London. Right. And uh, I, I used to work at the British Film Institute then. And they had a screening for us with a view to the BFI distributing the film. Mm. And the head of distribution at the time uh, dismissed it, saying that it's too boysy. Uh, so is that a word? Uh, yeah, for her it is. So uh, I told her, uh, didn't you see that uh, the men in the film are weak and it's the women who are strong? Mm. And she said, no, it's a boysy film. Right. <laughs> so, um, a yeah, but a lot of that stuff happened. I remember even when we did the music of the film, a lot of people who came in to hear the music from various labels, none of them understood what was going on with the, with the music of that film. Um, I remember just feeling so depressed. Um, like the head of this one music label came in and he started listening to the songs and then just by the second song had gotten onto his phone you know and uh, having conversation then said excuse me I'll be right back while the music was playing and left and we were like are we like what have we made <laughs> you, really do, you do question yourself because you I mean you're at that point in in time where you really feel that these people know what they're doing you know so you're hoping to get some kind of understanding of whether it's good not good whether it'll work not from them you know, and it's, uh, it can be quite disheartening mm. when stuff like that happens, but uh, fortunately people didn't agree with that gentleman when the music came out. Thank God. So, moving on to uh, Lakshya, uh, tell us about the experience. It must have been a very tough shooting in those conditions and you also produced for the first time uh, with uh, that film? Uh, I mean, although I did, I was a, a producer on Dilchata as well, mm. but um, there was also a third producer, Praveen Talreja on Dilchata. By the time Laksh came around, it was just Ritesh and me. So the Excel, as we know today, was was with Laksh. Um, but I mean, it was an amazing shoot, you know. And um, there's, it was very difficult. We were we shot in Ladakh, which is for people who don't know, um, is <coughs> um, all the way in Jammu, uh, in in uh, complete north of India. The the town itself of Leh is at about eleven thousand five hundred feet. Um, and we'd have to travel from there even further on, maybe at times up to 14,000, 16,000 feet to shoot. So it wasn't easy as a shoot, but uh, it was a great lot of people all very motivated to make this film. Um, and that made it, um, that, that's the reason I think we could achieve it. It wasn't, it wasn't easy at all. So, but um, full credit I think to, to the crew, to the cast of that film, who like kind of kept everyone, everyone motivated each other to be able to do it and that's um, that's the reason we that's the manner I think in which we could possibly pull it through okay now moving on to dawn uh, rebooting uh, an all-time classic like dawn mm -hmm. was a very brave decision so what made you do it I, I've always loved that film um, when I was a kid I used to watch that was one of the movies that I watched probably more often than the other ones <coughs> Um, and I think the reason for that was that I would find it fascinating being a huge fan of Mr. Bachchan, how he scared me in that movie, you know, as the character of Bond. I used to find him very frightening. Um, and I, was, I think that's the reason that film stayed with me. Um, and then I was like, you know, all those movies of that time, I thought it would be nice for me in my own way to kind of be able to do some, pay a tribute to all those movies that have inspired me by maybe making a film that belonged to that world and somehow the, the film Dawn I felt was a was a good film to be remade in today's time um, also I always felt disappointed that the real Dawn even in the original one didn't survive <laughs> I did 
personally because I used to I used to love that dialogue. Don't go pakarna mushkili ni na mumkin hai. And I mean, someone who says that and then dies. <laughs> एक्टिंग So, uh, was acting something you always wanted to do? Um, what were the circumstances? That no, no, not really. I think when I was a kid, because I didn't know any better, I didn't know what goes into making films. Um, the only thing you can fantasize about being really is an actor. You know, because I I don't know any kid who's fantasizing I want to grow up and be an editor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> you only you only know what you see on screen. So for on that level, yeah, I mean, I I did fantasize about. being an actor but i i didn't really follow up by doing anything that that would require me to prepare myself to be able to be one um and then as i learned more about film and as i got into like being an assistant director and stuff i i f- was very happy um just being on the other side of of the camera writing producing um just working with with actors that i've admired um and with rock on i i think it was the script which was one thing that was very um uh, very attractive to me to to try and get myself to do uh, and then the fact that it was about music it was about a band all these things are are very dear to me um, and i just felt like i had no reason to say no to it um and um, with abhishek who was the director i mean of course we wanted to make sure that apart from this um uh, desire to want to do the film you know like is it possible also to perform it so we did work a lot towards making sure that that could happen um and i enjoyed that process tremendously when i was doing it um and then i felt that you know i mean this felt good so maybe i can i can see maybe just try more things experiment a little bit more um so every film i think subsequently from that i've i've tried my best at least to keep challenging myself you know as an actor not end up doing things that i've i've already done so were you a musician already before rockon well um to the i'm not a, a musician to the extent of i i by playing guitar um with my friends you know like jamming a lot with them um i'd written just maybe one or two songs before that but since then i mean it's just kind of rekindled the whole love of it for me so um now i mean i have a a band of my own we we tour um uh, around the country we go to different countries as well with the band and writing our own songs i'm in the process of now recording um an album which is entirely original material so all of that's happening and i think all of that was rekindled by because of rock on i think that had a huge role to play in it yeah so faran live had a uh, successful tour of the us recently right that's right yeah. and uh, so are there any plans to bring it to the uk yeah but i'd i'd love to you know so i mean there's a, a team who manages the band who are constantly in conversation with promoters across the world to be able to go and do music there but uh, so as and when i'm i'm sure it will happen there is a, a great audience here for for hindi music for film music um and it's only a matter of time i think before we'll be here and performing so one of your best uh, performances as an actor has been in a very underrated film in my opinion uh, luck by chance and uh, how uh, you are not the first choice for the role no i was i think the 12th <laughs> <laughs> yeah no really and, and the reason i know that is because i was producing the film and many actors told me no well i mean like, will you please do it <laughs> so um uh, uh, uh you know it's amazing the parallel actually of that of what's happening in the film with what happened to the film is it's it's amazing I mean, like in the film you have a, a somebody trying to put this film together all the actors sing no and they finally cast a new guy you know and they get him and then the film does well um so it was is very interesting that actually even the way the film was put together played out more or less the same way <laughs> okay um now tell us about your preparations uh, for uh, bhag milka bhag uh, what did you do to get into that character both the physicality of it uh, and the mental side of things um and it was an it was a serious challenge you know um i i i don't know i mean i think speaking about process in that much detail is is quite boring but um it was i mean from having met uh milkha ji having met his family having seen him with other athletes <clears throat> seeing the respect that they have for him the admiration that they have for him 
how they still hold him as such a reference point for anyone who wants to try and achieve something, the, the kind of sacrifices, the work, the work ethic that he had when he was an athlete. I found all of that very, very inspiring. Um, and so when the time came to preparing for it, it was very, um, I was very strongly um, in the know, you know, that there has to be absolutely no excuse for not trying to get it, not trying to get it right. And then everything that happens, so be it the, the training, the working on, on the language, looking or performing like an athlete, all that stuff, everything that happened, you know, I think just happened predominantly because it was important for me that when he watches the film, his family watches the film, that they really feel that they, they made a good decision by letting me play the part. Yeah, and, uh, and you won a number of awards uh, for that part, rightfully so. Thank you. Um, now, uh, wearing your producer hat, uh, how involved are you in uh, Excel projects? Uh, do you visit the sets of films that you uh, green light? Um, not, not really that much. I'll probably go for maybe the first day or the second day of shoot. And then if somebody needs me to come in, I'll go. But I, I tend to leave directors who are working for Excel, I, I tend to leave them alone. Um, I, I don't uh, want anyone to feel that I'm kind of invading their space. Um, and the reason we've signed them is because they have their own vision, they have their own way of telling a story, um, which may not always necessarily agree with the way I would shoot a scene, you know. So I, I don't want to be there and have to comment on something that I may just feel compelled to do because of the way a scene's being done. So I tend to, I, I prefer not going. And then, I mean, eventually when the film comes to be edited, you all sit together and you try and, you know, put together the, the best way to tell the story. Because the film is remade again when it comes on to the editing. And, uh, and what's, the, what's the pitching process? Uh, as in, who decides? Is it you and Ritesh or is that? I mean, eventually it is us. We have a team that reads scripts. Um, but this is all just like standard working procedure. You know I mean? I think every company has that. <clears throat> it's not possible for either Ritesh or for me to read every script that comes or synopsis or concept that's sent. It's not possible. So we have a team that we trust, you know, given a certain brief of what kind of movies we're looking for maybe in this year or the next two years to produce. Um, and then they shortlist them and then uh, we hear it from them first, what they feel with their notes and their points. And if we feel that, okay, there is some, some potential in this film, then we meet with the writer and with the director and then take it from there. Okay, now this is a fairly long question. Uh, the specific topic of this panel, this particular panel is uh, Bollywood and its omnipotence. So that was all just a warm-up. <laughs> <laughs> so, now omnipotence is a, a fairly strong word. Right. Now, uh, from the heady days of 2001, uh, Dil Chata Hai and the Oscar nomination for Lagan, um, since then Bollywood's soft power has certainly grown. And uh, while Bollywood as a concept is well entrenched now around the world, uh, the audiences uh, largely remain niche. Uh, of, uh, I mean, with some exceptions like the lunchbox or uh, my name is Khan uh, or PK grossing twenty million dollars in China or Rajnikanth having a cult following in uh, Japan. So, what must the Indian film industry do to make the global mainstream view it the same way as Korean or Iranian or uh, French or Spanish films, or should Bollywood just continue catering to its uh, core audience? and not look at global acclaim and box office? Um, you know, I, I think eventually whatever recognition does come for Indian film will come because of what it is. Um, I, I don't think we can set out to say that this is, um, we'd like to speak to all these other people as well, so let's, I don't know, somehow design a film for that. There are certain films, like you mentioned, like The Lunchbox, for example. Uh, I think Ritesh Batra made a film that he believed in, um, and that he loved, and that he was passionate about. Um, and people somehow inadvertently enjoyed it, you know, and then it, it again, the film took on a life of its own. Um, I don't know how much Ritesh would have planned that, you know, I'll make this film and it'll be screening in, in the UK and in the US maybe six months down the line and the number of theatres will grow because people are liking it so much and it's not just the Indian population there. So I don't think you can plan these things, but I think it's, it's just important for filmmakers to be true to who they are. You know, it's, it's very difficult to, and I don't think it's advisable to, to be anything else but that. You know, so if 
your if everything that your inspiration what's made what's led you to be a filmmaker um, the stories that you want to tell if they reach just an indian audience then i mean so be it but as long as you're you're speaking the truth you know and you're speaking from a place that matters to you that you're passionate about um, i think that that's all that really uh, to me personally that's what's important and any film that needs to find an audience beyond that will end up finding it because of the quality of the work um and that's really that's what i think and i think most films even when you talk about um other foreign language films you know that do i mean i think there's so many films made we hear about the best ones you know um and there are english films made there are american films made we hear about a few we don't hear about all of them so what works on on a level where a lot of people will discuss it a lot of people will want to see it it eventually just completely depends on the piece of work and i think that piece of work the more true it is to what the filmmaker to the filmmaker you recognize that and i think you also respect that for what it is that's correct because uh, satyajit ray always uh, would say that he he made his films primarily for his bengali audience okay. and if he traveled uh, anywhere else that was a bonus yes um now uh, ted sarandos was in india last week uh, the ceo of netflix and uh, he said that uh, sacred games uh, which uh, uh, phantom is producing uh, has the potential to be india's not cause and could have a global impact mm-hmm. this this following on from the previous question uh, similarly do you think uh, mirzapur and power play that excel is producing for amazon uh, uh, could uh, resonate with global audiences well you can just hope for that to happen um, i mean we're making shows that we think um uh a good storytelling you know and is engaging viewing for people who are into the whole um format who enjoy watching that format um so that's what we're trying to do uh, we're we're doing the best we possibly can um and uh, again i th- i think it remains to be seen whether people will how much people will take to it whether people outside um the workings of like power play is on some level based on uh, loosely kind of a fictionalized um uh, t20s series of sorts you know so for people also have to be into cricket to be able to enjoy it, to understand the workings of that uh, understand how selection in india works understand the dynamics of, of various things in india um, in terms of whether it's with sport bodies how they function you know um, so there are various things that come into play with power play um, so it it remains to be seen but i mean again you just want to you want to have engaging storytelling and that's really all you can focus towards when you're putting a show together uh speaking of storytelling uh, audiences have uh, kind of they have, they have many things to choose from now and uh, footfalls have actually fallen in cinemas i mean uh, how many uh, students of lse actually go to the cinema to watch movies uh, as opposed to i don't know let's find out how many <laughs> i love you <laughs> all of you <laughs> yeah so um uh, what so what uh, what can the film industry do to ensure that footballs uh, come back in um you know i, I think what's happening uh, recently i read somewhere um which is which i think is to a certain extent is true that i feel like now possibly uh, the big cinema experience the big screen experience i think people enjoy more when there is something visually spectacular to watch um i think when it's a film that's when it's an intimate film a drama um where you could almost get the same because you're just enjoying the storytelling um you'd be as happy watching it on your television at home because now you can stream it you know or download it when it comes on to some um uh, whether it's apple tv or netflix or any of those or amazon um and you can watch it um you can watch it on your phone you can watch it on your ipad because there's nothing visually that you need to really be engaging with So that does tend to happen with certain films people are just they're very happy to sit back and let it come on to television at some point or on to satellite or on to any platform and watch it there so I think the big cinematic experience uh, I think now is more and more often is being saved for visual splendor that you need to go in there and really be like wow this could only be enjoyed on a big screen I I think that is something truly that is that is happening Okay so I think it's time to uh, for the audience to ask uh, questions but before that I have one last question we love uh, Farhan the actor and the musician when do we see Farhan the director coming back um 
it, it remains to be seen. I mean, it's something I do enjoy doing tremendously, and it's only a matter of time. It will, it will happen. Okay, questions, uh, gentlemen with the glasses and. Hi. Ah, hello. Do we have a mic going around? Yeah. Hi. Uh, so, the father is a very prominent Urdu poet slash writer, and the same goes for me. Shaban also comes from that background. Kafi asked me being one of it. Yeah. So, can you can you read the script? Are you fond of Urdu poems and shaira and shairi yourself? You know, one of my life's biggest regrets is not going through with my learning of reading the Urdu script classes when I was younger, because I feel there's such a, a universe of of literature that um, I find myself very now, unfortunately, um, kind of um, I have no access to because I can't read the language. Uh, I do understand it perfectly well when it's spoken. But um, it's something that I, I do want to do. Um, I have time, you know, so I, I do intend to start learning how to read it because, like I said, there's just so much amazing work um, that it would be unfortunate if people somehow can't constantly access it, you know, because of no longer knowing how to read the script. So, but, but yeah, that's one of my greatest regrets, is not learning the language. The lady on the balcony there? Hi, Farhan. Great to have you here. Big fan. I just wanted to ask you, uh, what drove you or inspired you to be such an active uh, uh, advocate of uh, women empowerment and women equality and be part of campaigns like He for She and Mirth and everything? And what is the message that you have for guys to kind of help achieve that? Thank you. Um, I, I think the biggest uh, inspiration really was um, at home. I've grown up just predominantly with my mom and my sister, um, who are extremely strong women. Um, and even my mom's side of the family, all her sisters, very strong, very independent women. Um, and so they've always been very, very inspiring for me. Um, and when I see at times, you know, um, maybe what they've had to go through in their lives, um, like I said, just in terms of whether it's attitudes towards women, towards working women. Um, and so that always did trouble me. And then, of course, when you have your own kids now, I have two daughters as well. Um, I feel very responsible to try and correct it as much as I possibly can. You know, um, so these are things that really do, do drive me to do what I do. Um, and my focus is, you're absolutely right, is predominantly actually more towards men to try and get them to um, open their minds more, you know, um, and somehow inspire each other, motivate each other to try and understand that it is very important um, to not just, you know, like have this thing of putting women on a pedestal. You know, we, we tend to do that. Meri ma and meri behen, you know, like all this stuff. And it's, they don't want it either. And it's just about treating each other equally and just being being cool with one another. You know, and, and how you'd be with a friend who's a man. I mean, just be that way with women. And uh, that's all they ask for. You know, so there's nothing beyond that. Um, so it's just really focusing on that and just trying my best, you know, to get them to see that, that there's no difference in anything that you want to get done or anything that you hope can be done better or worse. I mean, a man or a woman will do a job job as well or as badly depending on their qualification to do it. You know, so it has nothing to do with gender. So just that kind of thing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Farhan, uh, I'm really big fan of yours. And similarly, I'm even greater fan of uh, Javed Sa. So any <laughs> two lines that have impacted you uh, that you want to tell us uh, in Javed Sa's word? That, that I want to tell you in? Uh, like, written by Javed, sir. Any two words? Uh, lines, lines, lines. Like poetry, poetry, poetry. <laughs> um, well, um, apart from many things that we've, we've done together, I mean, he wrote all the poem in Zindagi Na Milegi Dobara, which was very exciting for me to recite. Um, so, I mean, if you want, I can share a poem from that. With yeah, you. go on, go on. Please, please, please. Please. Um, दिलों में तुम अपनी बेताबियां लेके चल रहे हो तो जिंदा हो तुम नजर में खाबों की बिजलियां लेके चल रहे हो तो जिंदा हो तुम हवा के झोंकों के जैसे आजाद रहना सीखो तुम एक दरिया के जैसे लहरों में बहना सीखो हर एक लम्हे से मिलो तुम खोले अपनी बाहें हर एक पल एक नया समा देखिए निगाहें 
जो अपनी आँखों में हैरानियाँ लेके चल रहे हो तो जिंदा हो तुम दिलों में तुम अपनी बेताबियाँ लेके चल रहे हो तो जिंदा हो So that I think film industry needs to change, and it should be more responsive. You have a question. <laughs> so that it should be responsive rather than shifting from entertainment. Yeah. Absolutely, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Lady there. <Dan. laughs> uh, please, please, please. No, he has a very valid point. I love your voice. It makes me melt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you sing two lines, sir, please? Can I sing two lines? <laughs> 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 um, well, I, th I think that everyone should also sing. No? <laughs> so we can sing. Um, <laughs> well, no, maybe I think since. She's asked me to sing. I can sing a song for her. Me too. Me too. Na me samjha, na me jana. Jo bhi tumne mujhse kaha hai, senorita. Magar phir bhi na jaane kyun? Mujhe sunke acha laga hai, senorita. There you go. The last time uh, Farhan did an on-stage event in uh, London, he also did a snake dance. <laughs> Just so you know. I, I was I was unwell on the at the time and had overdosed on my medication. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, Farhan. I'm hi, hi, oh. hi. Rish, my name is Rishka. And I just wanted to firstly tell you that me and my brother both have been a big fan of you since Dil Chahta Hai. Thank you. He even had the goatee basically since then. <laughs> so my question to you is, out of all the roles that you play, that is the producer, the director, the actor and the singer, which role is your favourite basically? Wow. Um, Why? <laughs> you know, it's really, really difficult to say. It is. I, I, I don't think I can say that I have a favourite. Um, because everything is, it's very different from the other, you know, it's like comparing apples and oranges. I mean, although it's all a part of film, but still when you're producing, it's great to see young directors, you know, coming in and giving them a platform to make a film mm -hmm. and seeing uh, a new talent kind of flourish. It's always very nice to see that. Um, as a director, to be able to tell your story and have so many people believing in it, sharing your vision, um, is very, very satisfying. Um, and then, of course, as an actor, to be able to perform work with different directors, uh, just somehow um, uh, tap more into your own emotional being, into your more, into your core, into your memories, to just inspire yourself, you know, to get more sensitive towards everything that you're playing. Um, and with music, uh, I think there's a, a connection that when you're on stage, especially, you know, that it's it's very difficult to describe that feeling what happens when you're on stage and you're connected with that audience. So everything just really does something different to you. So I, I really can't compare. I can't tell you which one is my favorite. Thank you so much for inspiring oh, all of us. Thank you. Thank Lady you in much. front, yeah. Hi, Farhan. I'm Priya. And Bollywood has often been seen as escapist, the dream factory, unrealistic. <coughs> it's been critiqued and criticized for glorifying things like Eve teasing. At the same time, it's supposed to be um, sexually repressive in ways. Whereas you've come up with films that have been very refreshing in their narratives and have quite challenged this in some ways, like even Zindagi Na Milegi Dobara and Katrina and um, right. uh, Ritik there, uh, Vazir, uh, Dil Chahata Hai, of course. I would love to know how you would like to see the cultural importance, the cultural place and discourse of Bollywood going forward. 
How would you like that to be perceived? Um, as far as um, the aspect of <coughs> depiction of, I think, with gender, with women, um, I, I think firstly it's very important to have strong female characters in your films. Um, I think that is something that is important to have. Um, and I do believe that that is something that is happening. I think a lot of directors are aware of it. Uh, there are many discussions that I've been part of with directors like Rakesh, like Ashutosh, um, you know, where we've had these discussions and even spoken very, very um, seriously about the portrayal of women when it comes to the whole Eve teasing, where you've normalized um, Eve teasing into saying it's courtship. You know, that happens in many films. Um, so these, all these things have been spoken about. They're all things that a lot of directors, the ones who care, are sensitive about and do try and be aware of when they're writing something or, or shooting something. Uh, but, I mean, be being in the field that we are, it's very difficult to lay down any kind of diktat, you know, of what is okay and what is not. Because you're immediately getting into a space where you're then curtailing someone's freedom to make a scene, <coughs> tell a story, write a dialogue, write a character the way they want to do it. So you can only hope to really inspire people or I guess get them to understand um, from the work that you do. Um, and I hope going forward that more and more people will, will realize that aspect of it. That there is an entertainment value to film, uh, but there is something beyond that. I think to movies, we do have a responsibility to people who are watching it. It's not only to get them to you know just come in and have a laugh or have a cry. I think there's something more than that. Because their film, and I don't know, I can't speak for other countries, but I know the impact that film has on kids in India because we see it everywhere we go. Um, and if they imitate dialogues, if they imitate the way you sing or they imitate the way you dance, they also imitate your attitudes uh, that you're putting out in the film. So I think it is important and we try our best you know, to get people to understand that. And hopefully that is something that will happen as time progresses. Oh, please. The lady upstairs. The lady here. Hi, um, I have a question. Um, talking about. Sorry, where is huh. <laughs> This is the third event of yours that I'm attending, actually. Um, I have a question uh, regarding the pay parity in the industry. In the past couple of years, that has been a very highlighted issue, e even in Bollywood and outside, mm. from Emma Watson to Anushka Sharma raising that issue. Mm. Um, why do you think does that uh, persist? And uh, you, being a director and producer yourself, uh, how can uh, what can uh, they do to solve it? Um, you know, I, I think it's important for people. The thing is, we are in a place where when we work, we don't tell anybody what they should get paid. Um, I think everyone has a self worth. Um, if you came and if I wanted you to be a part of a film, you'd know what it is that you would be happy getting paid to be in that film. Um, I'm not going to challenge that because I cannot tell you what you're worth. Uh, only you know what you're worth. So um, the way Ritesh and me approach it in our company is when we approach any actor, be it male or female, you know, we ask them what they think they would like to get paid for that film. Um, and they tell us, and of course everyone, maybe the male or the female, there is a round of negotiation that will happen because that's just how business people function. You know, So that does happen. But it's never to the point of saying that someone's not worth uh, what somebody else is. Um, you shouldn't get into that. Um, I also feel that actresses, because this uh, did happen, I remember very clearly, with the, when Anushka had spoken about it, I was asked that as well. Um, and I do feel that women should have then the courage to say no, to not do it. You know, um, If they feel that they're not being treated fairly, um, they should say, I don't want to do it. And I feel that there's enough powerful women in the film industry, powerful actresses, who can put projects together, you know, who, if somebody called me and asked me to come and work with them, I would gladly do it. Um, and many actors would, I can't say I'm the only one, or that I'm the only director who'd say, yes, I'll come and, and work with you, as long as, of course, the script is agreeable, you know, um, given all of that. But um, you would do it. And I think that you have to also, apart from, instead of just blaming the system constantly and what it was like, is create your own system you know, and create your own way forward. And I think you have the power to be able to do it. Um, and I hope that everyone who feels this way 
will do that, you know, because to wait for somebody else to find a solution for you, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, the lady here, and then the lady at the back, the blue shirt. Hi, Farhan. I'm Zara. I'm also an aspiring filmmaker. Um, and my question is, at the Actors' Roundtable this year, it was commented that often the females in the industry are almost outperforming some of their male counterparts now and there are great roles being written for them. But often, even with actresses like Anushka, Sharma and Vidya and many celebrated actresses, it's the more intense and tragic roles that seem to get that kind of attention. So I'm just wondering what direction you see writing going in in the future and is it possible to have more ensemble casts for women like Zindagi and Amalegi Dubara where we have like almost an all-female cast version of that and more light-hearted films that get that same praise and critical attention? Is that a possibility? Well, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I don't think that it's only a tragic, dramatic role. I think we've had films like, like uh, Tandu Weds Manu, you know, which Kangana was in, uh, which did really well. And it was, a, it was a fun film, you know, and it was she played uh, two characters in... One was completely quirky, you know, um, and so I think there's all kinds of work happening right now. Um, and you're absolutely right, there's some amazing performances happening by, uh, and roles being written. I think more importantly, the performance, you know, for, for female actors. Um, and again, I think it's something that, that will snowball, you know, that when you see that films are not only being made, but are also being successful, because in film, the commerce of it also unfortunately does come into play. You know, um, and um, when you see that films that are predominantly about a female protagonist, when they start performing well, I think more and more people will be encouraged to do it. And I think for a long time that was an issue, that films that were being made with female protagonists would not perform at the box office. Now that the filmmaker can't be blamed for, the film industry can't be, because the audience is not watching it. You know, so now the more the audience watches those films and patronizes those movies, the more people feel encouraged to want to make them. And then you'll start writing more, and then you'll go into making, whether it's comedies, uh, coming of age movies, all of that will happen. It's bound to happen because, I mean, you have to tell stories and you have to find new ways to tell stories. So that will happen. Lady at the back there. Eh? Oh, okay. Hi, Farhan. My name is Akhati. Um, and I just had a question about like how you spoke about being from a film family and like the younger generation being a lot more interested in like the glamorous part of filmmaking, so like being the actor. But what about like opportunities for like editors or like producers or like aspiring producers? So as you own Excel, like what kind of opportunities are you putting out? Are there any opportunities you're putting forward for like the younger generation trying to get into this, the side of so this side of Bollywood that not everyone like knows about and like not respects as much as you know what the actors do, right. but like the editors and. Not even the directors, but like the production designers. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think with this, um, I mean, every single person that we worked with, I mean, you'll find all their names, the people that we worked with. We worked with, I mean, apart from the films that uh, that I've directed or the films now that Zoya has directed, I mean, all the films that we worked, we worked with new directors, you know, who had come to us. Um, we worked with editors who are emerging editors who are just out of film school or from from the film institute, um, sound guys. Um, so that's that's an ongoing thing, and not just that, be it art direction, be it uh, costume. Um, you're constantly working with new talent because there's so much available to you. And like, how would you, like, how would, like, oh, I don't know for how many of the LSE students, but for like art schools and like, if you were, like, in university, um, in Sorry, can UK, you speak on that? I can't hear you make Sorry, sorry, so like, I don't know about how many of LSE students, but like, for, for students that go back from here, how are they, like, how do they make that? <laughs> debut, I guess, in Bollywood through, like, for, like, smaller roles, for example, like, again, like, Do I you said, have any like, internship? That's not what I meant, but okay. Yeah, uh, well, there, there are, because I mean, when you're making films, you always require crew yeah. uh, to, to work on those films. Mm -hmm. um, and more often than not, on most films that we do, there's there's always about like four to five, maybe even sometimes six people who are completely fresh, yeah. who haven't worked on a film before, who want the experience to understand mm -hmm. in different fields. So some work in production, some work in direction. Yeah. That does happen. Um, but the process of selection of that is not easy because there's so many people also applying for yeah, it. Of you know, so um, the, the thing with, with film is because it is a very competitive world. It is a difficult world to break, in, to break into. That it is. Because there's so many people constantly wanting to be a part of it. Um, but perseverance does pay. You know, um, and um, that's, that's all I can say. And at times it's just the luck of the draw. Yeah? 
you know, is what happens because then everyone comes with a similar kind of basic know-how. Yeah. How do you select one over the other? On what basis? It's just when you speak to them, some seem a little bit more charming at times, if nothing else, yeah. you know, um, and or more interested, slightly more in the know about what film maybe than somebody else. But the enthusiasm level is the same across the board. Yeah. So then you just have to to go with your gut and say, okay, these are the people you'd like on board. But that does happen, yeah. Thank you. Gentlemen upstairs. Hello, sir. Uh, my name is Rudra. And uh, uh, apart from being an amazing actor, you also reflect a sense of honesty. And I really respect you for that. Thank you. And uh, so my question is, uh, in one of the interviews, your father said that he was very uncertain about your future, that what you would do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, so uh, how uncertain were you when you were uh, a bit younger? And like, uh, what was at the, at the back of your head going on? What you thought about your future? And stuff? What are my parents now? <laughs> no, um, I, I know that I know that they were extremely worried, um, and I know that for a fact. I mean, I know that more from my mom than I know from my father, because I lived with her, and it came to a point where she wanted to throw me out of the house because she was so um, upset with me, really, for not taking anything seriously. Um, and uh, when it finally came to that point when she was like, okay, I think it's time for you to now leave. And I think you should go live with your father now. So I don't know whether it was leaving her and going or living with my father was which one was more scary, but I decided to get a job. <laughs> and and this, <laughs> that's really how it did happen. But, um, but I did stress her out tremendously. And I can understand that they <clears throat> must have felt for a period of our, about this one year when I was supposed to be going to, to college and I just completely stopped. I'd lost all interest in, in studying. Sorry, this is probably maybe the worst place to <laughs> say it. But, but it's the truth. Yeah, but so, yeah, they were extremely worried. No, I mean, uh, uh, what, were you, like, uh, what were you thinking in those, like, in that one? You know, I was just obsessively watching movies at that time. <laughs> That's all I was doing. I would watch about three films a day, uh, whether it was at home, when I was asked to get out and go to college, I'd go to a friend's house and watch films. Or if I could afford it, I'd go to a theatre and watch a movie there. But I was just watching movies for two years. I just, that's all I did. Um, and um, so that's what I was doing. I didn't have time to think about anything else. I was just wondering what should I watch next. You know? So that's really what was going on. A uh, gentleman with the glasses and the, in the back row. Thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, what's your take on uh, banning Pakistani artists in Bollywood that happened recently? And if the Bollywood film fraternity too often acquiesces to politicians' demands to do right. various things? Right. Uh, I mean, see, the thing with this, I, it's very unfortunate because I, I think everyone who works in an artistic, <coughs> creative medium would hope that governments and people can put art above politics that you can put it above things that are the differences between differences between people you would hope for that but it's a very complex issue you know um, and we have to rely at times on the better judgment of people that we've elected you know to be able to figure out what the atmosphere is uh, in a place um, and if they feel that they don't want to give working visas there's nothing I can do about it you know um, do I wish it was different absolutely I do wish that it wasn't that I do wish that Fawad could still work in a Hindi film. I do wish Mayra could have come to India and promoted race. I do wish all of that could have happened. But uh, unfortunately, it, it couldn't, you know, and all we can do is hope that things will change again, you know, and then whatever emotions that are running very high at this point, tomorrow will kind of calm down and we can get back to, to engaging with each other. On this. And I hope the other way around as well, because it's not just about India not letting in Pakistani art artists. Um, there's Indian artists can't go and perform in Pakistan either, you know, so it has to be both ways. It can't just be one. And gentlemen upstairs. Yeah. Hi, Farah. Hi. Hi, Farah. I'm Joe Dabar, and uh, I, I just want to say I really love you in Wazir and Bhagn Kabab. Every time you work, it's like a different dimension. Oh, thank you. And it's very challenging, I see that. My friend has a good question for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that she came with her own MC. <laughs> <laughs> I that. Um, my question is with regards to, so in today's day and age, we are living in an equal society and gender in, uh, equality is becoming a big thing that everyone's talking about. So what are your thoughts on the Indian censor board sometimes banning certain films which are trying to address 
uh, very bold topics. Say, for example, the recent uh, lipstick under my burqa, which has gone through a lot of controversy. Right. No, it's terrible. I, I don't think anything should be banned, personally. <laughs> I mean, I think we have... It's not... I mean, firstly, it's not a sense of board. It's not a sense of board. It's a board of certification. So they should certify the film. I mean, if they feel there's adult content or whatever content, and not just for lipstick under my burqa, for any film. Um, it's not the first film to get banned. Um, and I feel that if they feel that whatever it may be, they can, they can just rate it accordingly. You know, and people should be able to decide. They have to stop treating the audience like children. You know, I mean, we have the power to vote. We drive. You know, we do many things. I'm sure we'll be fine if we watch a film here. Yeah. <laughs> but like, why uh, in the corner? Oh. Hi, Fahan. Uh, my name is Sirjan and my question is, out of all the characters that you've played so far, which one do you relate the most to and why? Um, I, I think the ones that's, that's probably closest to me, I guess, would be the Imran character from Zindagi Na Milegi Um And I think Zoya and Reema also wrote it, just, I think, just keeping me in mind and knowing that this is, I, I, they just wanted me to be the guy. So I guess the kind of humor that that character has, his bond with his friends, I guess his love for poetry, you know, things like that. Um, so in the film, unfortunately, fear of skydiving, but I love it. <laughs> so they put that in as my fear because they knew I could do it when the time came. So uh, all these things, so I think that's possibly the closest one. Uh, the lady upstairs in the white dress. Hi, Farhan. First, I'd like to say we had Zoya here two years ago, and it's evident that between you and her, the audience absolutely loves your humor and your wit. Um, but uh, quick question: uh, From if you had to choose something to do next here and here on uh, going forward, would you rather write and direct, or would you rather act? Um, no. You know, I, I'm just finishing a film. Um, it's called Lucknow Central, um, and I have very um, uh, consciously not taken on anything to do after I finish this movie. I'll be done with this film now by the end of this month. Um, and I really feel like I need to just kind of reconnect on some level with um, what will excite me to, to do going forward. So um, there's nothing that I'm committed to either as an actor or as a director, you know, for this year. Um, and I'm just going to like really take some time and think about it because there's a part of me that's really, really wanting to direct a film now. But um, I'm also wanting to be very sure about what it is that I'd like to make. You know, so that, that's going to take some time. I've not had any space to be able to sit down and kind of really think about this seriously. Um, it, I mean, not that it matters to anyone here, but, <laughs> but, um, but I mean, it's just kind of been a constant on the go from one film to another since Zindagi Na Milegi Dobara. You know, so I feel like it, it's time to just kind of take my foot off that pedal a little bit and just kind of reevaluate what I'd like to do next. What's uh, happening with uh, Fakir of Venice? Uh, is it? I see that it's come back on the charts. Uh, yeah, I saw a poster of it. Uh, yeah, I did. I mean, that's. I said you the film really that sick. was done what, ten years ago. Uh, it was a film that was done um, just after the first dawn. Okay. Actually, so for all practical purposes, it was the first film that I ever acted in, um, and it was directed by a very dear friend of mine, Kolanan Sorapur, um, and he insisted that I do that film. Um, so I went in and it was a nice, it's, a, it's an experimental film, but it was a good experience of working on it. I worked very closely with Mr. Anu Kapoor, a very, very fine actor. So um, it was nice working with him, but uh, I believe yeah, they're, they're, they're hoping to release it, I think, this year. So all the best to them. Okay, we have time for a couple of more questions. The gentleman with the scarf at the back. Hi. <laughs> My name is Vinamra. Uh, thanks a lot for being here. And uh, just to lighten up the mood, I was wondering if we could do a quick 60 second rapid fire round since we had Karan Johar last time here. Can we do that? Have you seen the, se his, the season of uh, his, the new season? Of the we'll ask different questions. We'll ask different questions. Sorry? Different, different questions. questions. Okay. <laughs> we'll try. Okay, let's try. So, if you woke up as the falling people, <laughs> what would you not do? Donald Trump. <laughs> Tweet. <laughs> Salman Khan. What would I not do as Salman Khan? Wow. Um, Marry 
marry you. <laughs> yeah, Sabha. Okay, good. Rank the following in the correct order. Um, Salman Khan, Amir Khan, Shah Rukh Khan. Hey, and what is this question? <laughs> Alphabetically. <laughs> okay. Hey, I mean, this, you can't, you can't do that. Okay. Kill, marry, hook up. <laughs> Sorry? So, kill, marry, hook up. We have kill, marry, hook up with, with Salman Amir Shah. <laughs> Interesting. No, no, I'll tell you different options. So, you have Katrina, Deepika, and Priyanka. Right. You know, there's a reason I didn't go on Karan's show this year. <laughs> Has he put you up to this? <laughs> well, um, no, I, 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 Let's, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, the lady here, uh, the glasses. Hi. Yeah, go, go. Hi, uh, I'm a huge fan and all I really wanted to ask was that nowadays in Bollywood we kind of see the shift go from commercial marriage to Sala films to films that seem to be more heavy and um, a little bit more um, substantial in terms of the things that they carry. What do you think is the main driving force behind this shift. Um, what is the main driving force? No, I, I, I think it's just directors wanting to tell stories that are relevant to their times. Um, I think that would be the largest thing. Um, and it's good to see that writers and directors are getting more sensitive towards what they're making. You know, so it's, again, I think it's not just about mindless entertainment. You know, it's it's wanting to leave some kind of impression on you, um, or something for you to think about, um, and I feel that that's um, that's very commendable. That a lot of young writers and young directors have already, they've been, they've come in, they already have this understanding that it's not just about um, entertaining; it's about engaging on a level that's beyond just that. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> uh, gentlemen uh, upstairs, followed by the lady upstairs. Yeah. Hi, Bran. I had a question, uh, not for you, but generally I always want to ask this to uh, somebody from Bollywood celebrity circles. So why not me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, not you personally, but basically, uh, celebrities, right? Uh, we've been talking to you, very regular guy, not very different from any of us. But then society would impose a larger than life expectation and persona on all of you, all the actors and heroes, and they would have higher expectations. How do you basically deal with this <coughs> on a daily basis in your personal life when you have to sort of figure out that it's not real on the one hand and yet you have to play that role? Is it stressful? Right. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think it's not real. I think it's very real. Um, I, I think that for everything that we get in terms of love from people, support for what we do, and there are many perks that come with it, you know, of, of doing, of being in film, and, of, and especially when you're successful in film, and when people know you, there are perks to it. Um, and so at the same time, and as much as you can enjoy that, I think it's also, like you're saying, it's absolutely important to be aware of how real this thing is, and A, don't take it for granted, which is very, very important. Um, and the second thing is to be equally as responsible towards those people who are putting that some kind of a sense of themselves, their belief, their faith, you know, in you, uh, by supporting you with, through what you do. And you have to be responsible towards them. So which is why I, I feel that you shouldn't alienate yourself or start believing that it's only about you, because it's not about you. Um, if it wasn't for those people, you wouldn't be who you were. Um, so your responsibility, of course, apart from thanking them and being grateful for what they give you, is also what it is that you can do back for them in return. I think that that's very, very important. The lady in front here. Okay, so my question is about how Bollywood is seen as a platform for change. My question is really, like, as soon as you start making a movie about these heavier topics that actually would bring about change, how do you make sure that you still target a mainstream audience? Like, how do you target not just the kind of audience that goes to watch an indie film? Do you see what I'm asking? Right. No, I mean, I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, you know, in, first thing, uh, we, in, at least in the whole Hindi film scenario, there's really no concept of an indie film. There really isn't. You know, um, because in any case, the cinema going audience is so minute in our country. It's very, very tiny. The percentage of people who actually go to a theatre to watch a film okay. is very, very tiny. Um, so, when people, I mean, you make a film um, and be it about anything, I, I think, again, I'm from what we've been talking about pretty much throughout this evening, is there has to be something in it for the audience to be able to engage with. So, be it something that could be, a sli a, I, I won't call it heavier, I think heavy is not the right word, mm -hmm. uh, but something that, that is serious, um, something that is um, uh, relevant, something that is important, um, something that needs to be discussed. Um, so these things are reflecting more and more in film. Um, and actually, if you think about films that are doing well today, um, are more often than not films that have some issue at heart. You know, it's very rare that a film now that has a, no story and is just a series of events with songs thrown in, uh, performing really well. It's very, very rare that that happens. More often than not, even actors or producers or directors who got away with it, maybe like six years ago or five years ago, have realized that those films don't work anymore. The audiences don't want to see them. You know, so you have to really put the effort in to engage with them with a, with a story that's going to make some sense. Um, and when it talks about something or touches upon something that's broader and that affects a lot of people um, or is an issue that a lot of people are dealing with, those films tend to be more successful now and that's, that's an amazing thing because that's going to be very motivating for people to continue writing in that way. So that's, that's basically it. That's awesome uh, to hear. Sadly, that's all uh, we have time for this evening. Uh, thank you all so much. Thank you, Farah, oh, for you. being here.